welcome to Candy Crafts. Today I am, well, today is the first day of May, and this year I've been working on a temperature blanket, which is a blanket where you crochet one part of it every day, based, and the color is based on the temperature of that day, or like whenever you crochet it. So, so far, um, this is sort of what it looks like. I don't know how good the angle is, um, but yeah, it's about... I want to say seven feet long. I measured it out so that it would be about a rectangular square. Um, so not perfect square, but not a rectangular really, actually. Who cares what I've said before? And um, I'm gonna just kind of go over a little bit of this with you right now. So as you can see, there are different rows. I'm doing mine in rows. Some people choose to do theirs, like they crochet one square a day and then they make like a granny square blanket where they can do it out of hexagons or just however you want to do it. There's lots of different variations. <clears throat> I do different rows every day. And I don't know if you can tell, but the pattern, the basic pattern that I'm following is I crochet two rows of just like plain um, single crochets all the way across and that's it. And then right here, as you also probably noticed, is there's little bulges and the colors like right there and there and there and there and there and those are the rows that I do um, extra to kind of like help the pattern look cool instead of just row after row of the same thing, same thing, whatever. And so for that row, I crochet three single crochets, two half double crochets, two double crochets, three triple crochets, three double crochets, and then three half double crochets and um, repeat the thing over again. And that's why it looks um, like that. Anyway, today I'm going to go over um, and show you how I switch yarn. So, um, this is my temperature chart. And, yeah, I, I have it out of... I'm not sure how to... I'm just going to count this real quick. I have nine different colors. And I go all the way to 20... I've only used the dark purple one time this year. It was in March. It was like when I was up at like 4 a.m. for various reasons. Um, anyway, between the months, I crochet a white strip. So like right here I have a white strip, and right here, then there I have a white strip. And so today, since today is the first day of May, I'm going to crochet a white strip before I do the actual um, row of the day. So I'm just going to switch from this green, which is my 60 degree yarn, to my white. So how I do that is I hold it kind of tight right there. So I'm holding the the hook and the crochet and the yarn. And then I just I kind of loosen it so it's not really taut. And then I cut it. And you can cut it kind of however long you want. I don't like to cut it really long because it kind of wastes the yarn. But it's whatever you're comfortable with really. And then I have the white yarn. This is the brand I'm using. I don't really pay attention to brand. I think the most important part for this specific yarn is that it's acrylic. You can use, I mean, you don't have to use acrylic, I just use acrylic. It's very nice for blankets and other things because um, cause it's soft. But if you want to use bigger fluffy yarn, you can also do that. That just is bigger, so it, it's bigger. It ends up being bigger. Oh no. Okay. So having a little bit of an issue here, I accidentally pulled it out, which is how you would end up finishing off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out the last stitch. Hopefully I can do that. There we go. And now I have two loops that I'm, well, no. I'm just going to stick it in one. And the other one's kind of small. I'm just going to pull it out. Ooh. Good thing that I fixed that. The one doesn't go. Anyway, so this is one reason why it might be easier to have a longer one, especially if you don't have a lot of experience switching yarns or crocheting in general. Or even me, who's crocheted for like two, three years now, has trouble with it. So basically what I do is I hold this, the yarn that I'm changing to, down against the crochet, and then I hold it like I already have it tied off, and I hold it right there. Again, I don't know how you can see. I... I'm going to do a single stitch to switch yarn. If I was do changing in the middle of a row, that's kind of a different thing. But that I'm not going to show you how to do that right now since I don't have to. But 
I might link a video later showing how to do that if you needed to know that or you could just look that up on YouTube for a diff on a different channel. So what I do is I wrap it around, pull it through and I've done a single stitch and that enables me to change rows as well as yarn. So the, the white yarn is more or less secure. Um, don't pull it too hard, it's not actually secure. But I, I'm going to turn the yarn around, the pattern around, and I'm going to hold it down. And I'm just going to start crocheting. And this is a single stitch. So how you do a single stitch is you just stick the yarn through the hole that you put it in, make sure the yarn ends that you're you stitch are laying flat against the top of the crocheting like this again I'm not exactly sure how sh good this is how visually nice this is and then I just wrap it around pull it through so I have two loops on my hook wrap it around pull it through so I only have one that is one single crochet I'm just going to do it again you stick it through make sure they're laying down flat wrap it around pull it out wrap it around pull it through and then again I know it's a lot easier if you not you don't have to deal with the, the ends laying against the thing, but it's also not too complicated. And yeah, now I'm just going to do a single crochet row all the way across. So um, as I'm crocheting this, I'm going to do, I might do a little speed up later on, but um, yeah, so as, I, as I'm crocheting this, I have to go through a few things that I've learned over the last four months um, crocheting this blanket. The first thing is if you want to make a, um, a video with about this, you should probably um, like plan ahead and not start in February. I only started taking pictures and like prepping for this video in February. So yeah. The other thing is make sure you know which row you're on for that day. I have missed rows. And make sure you don't forget. Anyway, those are a few um, things that I've learned. Um, one thing I like to do to make sure I don't forget to crochet that day is I set an alarm. So I always know that if I have it in my, by 6 o'clock that I have to sit down at that time or at a time when I can after that. And I just crochet. Okay, okay. so I just finished uh, my white row, and I, and I checked the temperature, and it's in the 60s, which is, according to my chart, the 60s is this green color. By the way, if you if your temperature doesn't vary a whole lot, you can have different areas. You can have it every 5 degrees, every 2 degrees. I have it every 10 because it's always easy. That's the only reason, actually. So, yeah, the, in the 60s is this green color and so I'm going to show you how to stitch this ball of yarn this color and actually I might have get to show you how to switch halfway through a row because this is not a lot of yarn so we'll see anyway basically you do the same thing that I showed you for turning going through white you first of all find the end of this yarn and press when you find it hold the yarn hold the crochet hold the hook get the scissors Cut a place you feel like is good for you, and then hold it down, cut on your finger, wrap it around, crochet. Yeah. So this, um, I, this next row I'm doing is still going to be a, just a row of single crochets. Um, I did my 
random one that I was with the other sessions yesterday. And so I'm going to do, and then tomorrow I'm going to do the, the, that row again. Because I do two rows of this, and then one row of that, and two and one, and two and one, and so on. Anyway, so you just crochet the same way I told you. You stick it in, wrap it around, pull it out, wrap it around, pull it through, and so on and so forth until you finish the row. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to um, make it really fast with some snazzy music. I don't run out of yarn, I will tell you where, I will show you how to switch halfway through the row. So, as you can see, I, re I finished the ball of yarn, so it's fun now. Um, and I'm going to show you how to switch. And this is how you, how you switch yarn in the middle of the row. It really depends on how you, like what, st what stitch you're doing. And I think the, the more complicated the stitch, the harder it is to make it look natural when you switch it. So, sometimes the best you can do is make sure that it kind of matches up. Sometimes it's not going to look normal, and that's totally fine. For um, single crochets, which is what I'm doing now, it is going to look kind of normal, and it's kind of easy to match it, but if the color is different, like right here, the color is slightly different, or you're more than slightly, I'm not entirely sure, you guys can tell, it's going to look a little bit different. Um, so yeah. So what you do is the same thing you do when you're switching yarns during a row. You put it against the fabric, or the yarn crochet thing, put it down, Hold it up, and then instead of just like actually do it like this, and then instead of um, doing cleaning a stitch, you just stick it in and wrap your hook around the new yarn, pull it through, and continue as normal. And then remember, you want to make sure you keep the ends like flat on top of the thing right there and there. Hold it there and keep wrapping it around. And you make sure that these things don't um, poke out. And if they do poke out, you can just kind of cut off the ends. It's not the end of the world. Make sure you don't cut the actual crochet project, because that would be devastating. Anyway, that's how you do it. Um, if you're having a different stitch, you can either do it halfway through the stitch, which might help make, make it look more natural. Um, if like, you just pull the random string out of nowhere. Or you can just do it in the beginning of the stitch, like I just showed you. And you just hold the end of the yarn down on the fabric. And you proceed as natural. And it will definitely be hard, especially um, like if you haven't done it before, it's gonna be hard. Haven't, if you had done it before, it's also gonna be hard. But yeah, anyway, so you can kind of, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see in real life, like how where the yarn used to be the same and where it kind of changed. And it's still green and it's still kind of dark, but this shade is like darker and less. Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say bland, because the word for it is by color, but, um, yeah, you can kind of tell how where it is, but overall, it's not really going to matter. You, it, obviously, it's best to get the closest matching color, sometimes it's not possible, and it's nothing to, nothing to stress about. And yeah, I'm going to speed it up again. Okay, at this point I've finished my um, 
doing well for today and that's all I'm going to share on this today. Um, yeah, I'm going to edit this video and post it hopefully today or tomorrow. And thank you so much for watching. This is at the last uh, end of day of month four on my favorite book list and I ho hopefully I'm going to update you two more times. One at the end of August and then at the end of the year when I finish it. So stay tuned.